Okay, guys and gals, we are going to do another formal logic example. This one's going to be a little harder um, than my last couple examples. We want to prove this statement right here. Um, P and R implies Q and S. And here we have, well, let's put given. And uh, we want to show that P implies Q and R implies S implies P and R implies Q and S. Let's get started. So, I'm gonna start a new line right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda decompose this a little bit. So first things first, I would say P implies Q. And that rule is gonna be simplification. And that's when you kinda decompose an AND statement into its uh, separate parts. We cite our line number. And then R implies S, and that's another simplification of line one. Now, we're gonna start the interesting part. What we wanna do is uh, we're gonna do something called a uh, deductive proof. I'm just writing that down so you can see it. This isn't technically part of our proof. You don't have to write down on the side of your paper <laughs> what kind of proof you're doing. Uh, you can write it here in your rules. Because what we're going to do now is, uh, you notice what we're trying to actually demonstrate through our proof is that P and R implies Q and S. Uh, we're not trying to prove that Q and S is true, we're just trying to prove that P and R implies that it's true. So we're going to assume our statement P and R and see what we get. So we're going to assume, remember you always want to say why you're assuming something, uh, and we're going to do this for deduction. Uh, there's a couple other ways to write that, like I, I think um, you could do like an arrow something, uh, maybe not. Uh, point being, I would, I would probably go with assume for deduction. I think that's probably kind of the safest way to write it so that it's understood. Now what we're going to do is we're going to further decompose this. So we get P and we get R. So this is going to be simplification line 4. It's going to be simplification line 4 as well. And then from there, Q and S. Well, we know that P implies Q. We know that we have P. So we can actually say Q right here by modus ponens. Um, there we go. Uh, so that would be lines two and five. And we can also say uh, R implies S. R is right here. So we've got S also by modus ponens. And that's going to be line three and six. <laughs> now we're going to do something called adjunction. Uh, you can also call it conjunction. doesn't really matter. But we're going to remember we're trying to prove this. And this is a deductive proof. So it, the beauty of deduction is that it's very similar to this. We're saying if this, then this. So if this, right here, uh, I'll even circle that. If this is true, which we assumed it is, because again, we're not trying to prove anything for sure. We're just trying to prove an implication. So if we assume this is true, this has to be true, because if this is false, this can be anything, and it doesn't really matter. It will still meet the definition of, a, uh, of an implication. Um, but now we're going to say Q and S by adjunction. Or again, you can say conjunction. doesn't really matter. And this is going to be of 7 and 8. And then we can actually exit our subproof here, because we have shown this implies this. So P and R implies Q and S. And this would be um, either arrow introduction. Yeah, that's, so that's what I was thinking earlier. This could be either arrow introduction or I think a better way to write it, to be honest, would be um, uh, just by uh, deduction. 
and then cite your lines so that would be four through nine and then put your token box and you should be good to go.